Hey, we're going to crack on with building two or three extra sections for this one page tutorial. Now I am going to very quickly change the header because um, I modified the hero banner and did some stuff to it. But this header here, I think needs a little bit of a uh, background color on there, just a tiny bit, because obviously you can't see the wording very clear. And also when you scroll down, we've got this red effect as well. So I just want to quickly change that just to remind everyone how you do it. We're on the home page right now. We're inside of bricks. We're going to click edit header. It opens it in another tab, just in case you're worried. There's the home page, there's the tab. Okay, and we can clearly see it there. Let's just go over to the section, go to our settings over there in the top, template settings, and then we're going to go down to the head. And you can see here we've got scrolling text color. Well, I really don't want that at the moment. So let me just completely clear that away. I'm going to do is add a bit of an effect. So I'm going to say that after, say, uh, 100 pixels, I want it to kind of go slide up. And then it will kind of reappear afterwards. But also on the sections, that was just for the, the, the sticky header top. But on the background of here, we are going to add to this section a background color. I'm going to make it be about 0.55. When we go over to the live screen, Screen. Look, you can see it there and look, it, it's clearly visible. And then when you scroll down 100 pixels, it moves away. And when you just move your mouse up a tiny bit upwards, it reappears down there. Okay, so we get a nice little bit of a transparency effect that I'm okay with that now. Of course, you could say it was fine without this color here, but I'll leave it on. Now let's go and do our extra sections. Let's just minimize these sections that we have here. I'm going to rename this one to be logo section so we know what it is and underneath we are going to add in a new one here now there's many ways you could add your next section you could just literally do section and container which is what i'm going to do or you could go in and drop in a container and then add in your blocks or your items within i like to go with section and container because i might end up rearranging or doing something with the container and i might decide i'm going to add in another container later so for now i'm going to go with that now this new container because our dominant image or person of interest is on the right hand side in the third section, I want the Im I'm going to have another image, but I want it to be on the left hand side just to balance things out a little bit. And I'm going to have my text on the right. So it's almost like a flip of what you have over here. You don't have to do that. You can keep it very symmetrical or however you want to do it in the flow. But I like to balance things out with flipping a little bit as well. So in this section, uh, we are very quickly going to first give this, well, go to style and define the height. I've put 50 VH, which is fine. I might come back and change this because remember what I've said before. I like to have my section containers, but I don't like to mess around with how things look until I've got all my content in. So this is just a like a precursor and I'm probably going to eliminate that later on. I'm into the container. There will be image and a block of text. Now, you could, if you want, go in and pop in a block right? Or a div even as well, and then have them all within there. I am just going to add in my image and my text straight into the container. And then I'm going to make it be a row. There'll be no need for any wrapping because there'll just be two items side by side. Okay. So again, I'm keeping it really simple here. So click on the container. I'm going to click image and I'm going to click rich text as well. Uh, go back over to the container, which we are already inside. And I'm now going to say, make this be a row. And I'm now going to decide on the alignment. Uh, sorry, that's the wrong one. We're going to make that center there and it will be centered that way as well. Let's now define our image. Uh, this is an image I've just taken from the humint.com website where I've just generated some colors together. I actually got a few over here as well. So this is just for a fake portfolio, by the way. So let's just going to insert that got our image in we're going to leave it as a full resolution I'm it's not going to link to anything I'm going to go over to the style and I'm now just going to define on the size now remember this is a 1000 pixel width in fact let me just show you what it looks like on preview mode at the moment so there we got our image remember our container is stretching across however it is only 1000 pixel in width this image at the minute is way too big so let's make it a lot smaller 600 pixels for the width and if we just look at this now in preview that's how big it is we've got this bunch of text here let's go and drop some text in go to our rich text go to our content the reason why the rich text is cool is because you get so much more features rather than just a basic text which is literally just basic text right that should do fine. Um, don't worry, we are going to adjust the margin and everything like that. The only thing at the moment, though, that text doesn't have any style applied to it. So what we're going to do, though, is after I've pasted it, is go and use one of our previous classes that we've been using as we've been building this. We're going to go for the standard text. And that is now bigger. And I think that works fine for what we're doing here. So let's just view this on the preview mode again. That's looking okay. Um, 
when we space this out with some right margin or even padding, the text will wrap a little bit more, okay? Let me show you that. So on the rich text, on the style, we're gonna go to the margin and I'm gonna drop in about 50 and just have a save and double check of that. Now for the container, which contains everything, let's give it some breathing space away from the items at the top and below. 80 at the top and 80 at the bottom. Before we move on, always go and check how it looks in the mobile. Obviously the tablet and everything as well, but I'm just focusing on the mobile for now. So when we get to the mobile, this is what we currently see. Um, let me just shrink this down a little bit like that. And by the way, I always like to check in 378 because if it looks good on there, 378, you're kind of covered for every other size as well. I want my images to come inwards a little bit. So I'm going to say give us a padding of about uh, 20 on the left and 20 on the right like that. So that's brought that in. And we move on to the rich text and we give that about 30 there and that's moved down. And because we've already applied on the container some padding of 2020 there, we don't need to do anything to the other items. Now, I haven't added a class system for the container because if I decide, right, all of my containers are going to be 50, 20, 20, 50 like that, I could, if I want, just add in a class right? So that this is all now consistent across the board. In our section, we originally gave it a 50 VH, right? Let me now get rid of that 50 VH, okay? If we now go to our container, we've got 80, 80 above. So I don't need to put in a restriction like, or a threshold like 50 vertical viewpoint height, vertical height. I call it vertical height, get over it, okay? Um, because I've got 80, 80. If I did not have that 80, 80 in, everything would be flush up against the top and the bottom. But now it, it's fine, right? That is fine. So what we're now gonna do is move on to our second section. Now this is where you can, if you want, um, create a completely new section, or you, this is where you can be a little bit creative, right? So I've got section and I've got container. My next container is again gonna be text and image, but this time I'm gonna flip them the other way around and I'm gonna slightly change my images. So I have two options here. Do I start from scratch or do I just duplicate or do I just add in another container? This is the easier option, just add in another container. Let's just go over here. We've got image and rich text. Let's just pick it up and move it around. So now it flips over. Let's go over to our rich text. I'm just gonna hit zero there to ensure it goes all the way along. And instead on the right hand side, I'm gonna add in 50 now. So now we're kind of mirroring what we did above. We are gonna adjust things by the way, okay? I'm just kind of adding in 50 pixels separation from the images on the right hand side. Now this image here, uh, we are actually going to duplicate this, okay, because we are going to have two images, but this time they're going to be more vertical in height. What I'm going to do first is make this image be a 250, okay? So we had 600 divided by 2 is 300, but I'm going to add in a bit of spacing in between as well. So I've gone with 250. What I'm now going to do is duplicate that as well. So because our container, uh, if we go to our content, is set in the direction of row, right? And we're not doing any wrapping at the moment. This is fine to do what it is at the moment. Now I'm going to swap these images out for something else. Now I've knocked my face off for a moment because I just want to show you something that's really, really cool. And you might not appreciate this a lot. Can you now see we have these two images? We've got image two, well, two, and we've got image three over here, but they are different heights. Now you could spend time adjusting the width and all of that to make them be the right height. But this really simple solution is to go to this image here, Okay, go to style, go to layout, scroll down until you get to the flex. You have put it at the start, which puts it bang on at the top. You put it in the center, which it already was, put it at the bottom, or you can stretch it. Now you've got to have a think about both. Do you really want to be doing that? Like, do you want it to be stretched? Is that going to mess up the image? Now, because this is a fake image, I can get away with it a little bit. However, you may want to um, you know, decrease the size of this width over here. If you decrease the width, in fact, I could show you that as well. Let's not do this method, right? Let's go over to this image over here where we have the width. And instead, what we're gonna do is we are gonna drop it down. 227 kind of brings it almost in line now. However, I don't want them to look like that because now they are way too close to one another. So what I'm gonna do is go over to image one and I'm gonna add in a little bit of spacing on the right-hand side. It won't be 50, but I will go for 20 or something like that. 
Here's where shadow effects can work to help you out with defining images and how they look, because I'm sorry you can't see it because my face is in the way again. Uh, we've got quite a bit of gap over here. So if we go to our container, so I'm going to just put in a zero there and that gets rid of the top one because we don't need to have 50-50 at the top there. So for the container in the mobile, let's go and adjust that as well. We don't need this to be uh, basically have a 50 over there as well. We can get rid of that. 2020 uh, is fine over there we'll leave the 50 at the bottom uh the rich text uh we we got a 30 that kind of i'm not sure why we had oh that was from sorry that was the 30 from before why it brought over i'm just going to put a zero in here as well to stretch that out we're going to make the minimum width be 100 percent. now this is where you may get a little bit confused because when i first started using this i was going like this 100 percent and that works okay, but you may want to define on what is the size you're going for here. So for this particular um, uh, um, <laughs> break point, I'm actually happy for the minimum width to be 100% like that. And I'm going to do the same for the second image and make sure that's got no values in and go for 100 there as well. But now what I'm going to do is with um, between image, uh, well, image two, I am going to add in a bit of margin just to separate it. But before we do that, what about if we reorder the items? So when we're in the mobile, uh, we got the rich text and we, then we got image two and image three. I now want image two to come before the rich text. Now, what you don't want to be doing is starting to rearrange items over here like this. So instead, what I'm going to do is go to the rich text, stay on the style. And when you get to positioning and when you get to positioning, make this be order two. I'm going to go to the first image and I'm going to make this one be order one. And then I'm going to go to the third image in a way and I'm going to make that be order positioning number three. The image, the text and the second image. You go back to desktop and it is still looking like that. It is still fine. It's only when we get to the mobile and remember I'm doing this on 378. Okay, we now have image, text, image. Now I'll go to my, uh, let me do this right. Let me go to the text. Okay, and now let me add in some margin and I will go with 30 and we'll go with 30 over here as well. Before I move on to the final section, which is going to be a copy of the media or the logo carousel we had above where it's moving automatically, we're going to put in some example fake website images in mock-ups and whatever. I am just going to move, make these images have a little bit of an entrance animation. Click on the image, go to style, stay on the layout tab, scroll down until you get to entrance animation. And what you want to do is click that and now decide on how you want it to appear. If you want to do like fade or rise or zoom or something like that, if I do rise, no, it's not rise. Is it fade in up? Yeah, it's fade in up. Uh, where is it? There we go. Fade in up. That should do it. Uh, I'm going to say that it is a normal speed animation delay. One and a half for now. Let me just test that out in a gun. It's always good to test. Don't just assume it looks all right. So we get to scroll down. Yeah, that, that was slower. That was a bit better there. And then I'm just going to do the same over here as well to the second image. Just going to close this section down. And this one over here where we had the automated scrolling effect, I'm just going to copy that. And, I mean, I could just duplicate it, to be honest. I don't know why I just copied it. I'm going to now pick it up and I'm going to move it to be below over here. So we've got here a section logo. We got the, I think we should change this one to be details, shouldn't we? And this new one here, I'm going to call this up the mock-up section. This one's going to be pretty, pretty easy because all because it's already got copies of what I had before. It's gone back to the same black color that we had. Um, I mean, what we are missing, though, before I go on to that is another call to action button. We haven't got another call to action. So really, you should have one in, right? So should we address that now? I think we should before we move on to that final section, right? So let's just go back up to our details one. In fact, we'll go up to the hero section. I'm just going to copy uh, this button over here. I'm going to drop this over here. I, I was going to do it on the one below, but I've now decided that's, that's not going to look so good. Now, the problem we have is this. Now, you could you might say, well, that's pretty easy. We could go over here to the content and this at the minute, this container does not wrap. It's in the direction of a row and we could wrap it. And now you could realign them to be side by side with custom width. It's a little bit more trickier than that. 
And what I would say we do instead is we've got our container, right? I would say we now drop in after the image, a block like this. So over here, we have a block. I'm gonna pick up the block and I'm gonna drop it after the image, right? Into the block, I'm gonna drop in the rich text and the button. I'm gonna click on the block. Maybe I did that a bit too quick. I'll go back again. Let me reverse myself, okay? This is the situation we've got. I want the button to be below the text. I'm gonna drop in a block below the image. So the image and the block will be separate entities. Into the block, I'm gonna drop in the rich text and the button. So now that kind of looks like that. Uh, I am gonna go to my rich text though, and I am gonna get rid of the space we had on the left-hand side because we don't need that be there. Um, I'm now gonna go over to my block, go to my content. I'm happy with it being columnar. I don't need to press it, it's done that by default, okay? I am gonna go into my button, however, um, go to style and I'm gonna say, give me about uh, 30 from the top there, just so we have a bit of spacing. Now, if we go to this container, it contains an image and a block. It is in the row, but the items are separating out underneath one another, why is that? Well, that's because of the whips we currently have at the moment. If I go to the image, I go to style, the width of this is 600. I'm just gonna decrease this down to be 500, okay? I'm now gonna go to my block. Now, technically, because this is 1000 pixels in width, if I was to go like that, 500 by 500, it should fit. There's always a little bit extra here or there where it just doesn't work like that. So if I go over now and I do 450, now it fits. It's okay up until 482, right? <laughs> but um, I'm just gonna go with um, 480 for now. Now let me just show you how that looks if I just view it. It is very cramped up side by side, but we're gonna sort that out, okay? What we can really easily do on our container, go to content, okay? And rather than now having them centered, I can do space between. When I do space between, okay, it didn't really shift a lot, okay, that is now doing the full 1000 pixel. The problem I have though is that that is too close and I wanna go back to having my 50 pixel difference. I'm gonna go to my block, I'm gonna go to style and I'm gonna say give me 50 like that. And this is where now I'm gonna have to adjust this and say put that down to 430. You're doing a bit of maths here, okay. 480 was okay. I've now added on 50 pixel spacing from the image. Well, I might as well take the 50 off the 480. So far, that's looking okay. Obviously, you would check it in the mobile as well. I mean, if I just flip over to mobile, go to my block, I'm gonna go to my style, I'm gonna get rid of that zero over there. That is looking fine. That's looking fine as to in terms of the layout that we got there. So, so far, so good. Now let's go back down to the one we were gonna do, which was the mock-up generator. And this already has a container in here. It's already got a nestable slider. Go and watch our previous video because that covers all of this off. Click on the slider nestable and I'm gonna get rid of everything except the first one. I've got one slide in here. Um, the slide literally was just uh, image and text. If you wanna just go over here, you got the slide, you got the, uh, the bricks item one, item two you could call whatever you want, we got an image and a heading, you now get to decide on are you just going to have images, are you going to have text or whatever, I'm actually going to get rid of the text so we have just the image, let's now click that image and this is where you can now bring over something else, is it going to be just like the light box or is it actually going to take them to another page so it might be that when they hover over it, or sorry not hover, when they click on it, it might go to a case study page. For now, I'm just gonna leave it as light box because these are all fake images. What I'm now gonna do is just duplicate that. Uh, I think I can do five images, I think I've got, or four. Let me just go into now each of them. So I've put in five uh, fake images. I'm now gonna go back to my slider nestable because uh, please do watch the previous video if you wanna see this because what this has got in the CSS part is some custom code which allows the slider to automatically slide with no need for like pagination or navigation or anything like that. Um, what you do also need to do is go to the slider nestable, go down to your options, and this is where you might wanna adjust things. So I might wanna say pause on hover, because now I do want you to be able to pause and click. You know, you don't just want it to kind of run all the time. I mean, I've only got five slides, so I'm just gonna go with four actually for now, right? And then the slides work, but I'm not gonna change any of the settings there. I'm just gonna save that. If I go over to the mobile, this will show two. Now you might wanna change this to only show one because maybe you're showcasing websites. And when we get over to the mobile view, I'm gonna say only ever show one. 
But don't worry, on the mobile, sorry, on the desktop, you will see too. Um, what you will also might want to do is adjust the height. Remember, we are using a previous one I made in yesterday. I think it was yesterday's video. So I'm just going to add changes to be a uh, 50 VH there. So we get a bit of spacing there. And on the desktop, I think we're okay with, yeah, the spacing we've got there is fine. So let's now just save that, view this in the proper mode. We've got our header with a transparent background. Okay, and it disappears when you scroll up and down. We got our scrolling logo that we did uh, in another previous video, which was yesterday, I think. We've added another section, scroll down. We now get our carousel. If I was to click on, say, this one, you're going to get your light box image because I didn't make it go to a URL or anywhere else like that. So there we go. We've got our carousels kind of moving over there. So we still got more to go, but that was just me bulking out with a few more sections and a bit more. Again, just repeating what we've done before using a bit of the class system, messing around with the layout as well, just creating a very simple one page website at the moment. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the bat, put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag.